Hi, my name is Kim Mark. I am the author of the book series, The Chronicles of Nadine. Now, do you have a dream that you want to realize, but you just can't get started? I've been in that place. I wanted to become an author, but I didn't know how to start. And it was only because some courageous people helped me to be able to get started and they walked me through the steps. And one of the biggest things that I had to overcome was fear. So I've created this course for you in mind so that you will be able to work through whatever fears are holding you back. And this course is specifically for people who are authors. However, the principles that are in here are principles that you can teach your children and you can teach other people that are wanting to start those first steps onto whatever their dream is. So let's jump right into our notes. I hope that you have a pen and a paper, maybe a cup of coffee, and we can work through this together. So welcome to how to start your author career. In this module, we're going to be overcoming fears. And this level, of course, is for beginners. So it doesn't matter how little you know, it's for you. The tools that you're going to need are your pen, notebook, and of course, your mind. It will take approximately 20 minutes to get through this course, but the homework, should you choose to embrace it, is two to four hours, depending on how many distractions you have, how focused you are able to be. So let's jump through to the first module. Okay. What we're going to be covering today is your dreams, what beliefs could be holding you back, reframing fear, I'm going to share some personal memories with you. Then we're going to look at some famous authors and criticisms that they've received. And then of course, our homework. So let's go into dreams. What is the dream that you have that you've been waiting forever to realize? Maybe it's a brand new dream. Everyone has got their own dream. Now, way back when, more than 10 years ago, I had a dream of becoming an author. It was something that my family encouraged me to do, but I just couldn't start. I had a friend who came and chatted to me, and she dealt with a whole bunch of issues that I needed to work through my fear. How to start, the fear of being rejected. But what anchored me? What were the things that I had to hold on to to be able to start? What are your anchors? Here are some dreams that other authors have had. One is creating a retirement plan that outperforms inflation. You might think that it's very strange to have that inside this kind of curriculum, but it actually is very relevant. You see, most of us are not going to be able to work at the same capacity we're working at now in years to come. If you have a retirement plan, I'm very proud of you. It's great that you are planning for your future. Reality shows us that the amount of money we thought we needed for retirement is not really going to make, make it for what our real needs are. And that is because of a nasty little thing called inflation. My father planned for his retirement, but he had to cut back severely because that money didn't work. There are pension funds around the world that are going bankrupt. And so you need to choose the kind of lifestyle you want to have. And if you have a catalog of books that you can sell well into your advanced years, up until the time that you die and beyond that, then you can be selling those books and earning royalties at current market-related prices, which means that you will always be beating inflation. I don't know about you, but I do not want to be dependent on my children. My parents are dependent on me. And although I do it with the greatest of love when I am able to, for their dignity, it's not quite the same as earning your own money and being actively, economically active. So you might have a dream to leave a legacy for your children. Books can do that. They can give the, your children royalty income long after you've passed away. For me, 
my middle child was my inspiration for my books. And I know that when she is older, she's going to be able to read those books and say, mommy created this with me in mind. And it is something that's going to be able to pay for a lot of things that she would want to have paid for in the future. In fact, I can take care of all of my children in the future for what I'm building at the moment. So what is your legacy that you want to leave? Maybe it's just a story that you want to pass on to your family. My special friend, Wendy, her mother passed away recently and her mother had such wonderful words of wisdom. If she could find someone to write those words down, a lot of people could be inspired. I was inspired when I went through that. My grandfather was a prisoner of war. He escaped. When I found out that information, I was too young to really care. But now that I'm older, I wished I had that story. His name was, what went through his mind at the time? What is the legacy you want to create? Maybe it's fame. Maybe having an international bestseller is what your dream is. I would love to have my books turned into movies. I have already planned which actors are going to fulfill the different character roles. It was something that we did as a family. Everyone gave out who they would like to have for that particular role and we have got a dream list on who the actors would be. So what is your dream? I have to tell you that destiny is not a matter of chance. It is a matter of choice. The choices that you make today are the ones that are going to produce your future. So start today by taking some small actions. In your homework, there will be some very small basic actions you can take to get started. Still with me? Let's look at belief systems. What is holding you back? Now, many authors start with typical fears. They often wonder if their work is going to be, too, is going to be good enough. So when we look at famous authors like J.K. Rowling, who did Harry Potter, she is a billionaire from her books. And you might say, that is unachievable. I don't even know how I'm going to pay rent next month. I can't even begin to think about being a billionaire. That seems unachievable and unrealistic. Well, I have to tell you, you're wrong. Because I watched the interviews with J.K. Rowling, and she said that she was as close as possible to being homeless as what you can get. They were barely hanging on. And she had a really moving interview where they went to the apartment where she wrote the first stories. And she started tearing up and saying, it seems unbelievable to her now, even now. So you're not alone. Really famous people have had those fears and those feelings that it's not realistic. Then you may feel you failed too many times in the past. Well, congratulations, because I have to tell you that I have never, ever read a book where the hero just has absolutely everything going wonderfully. They're popular, they're wealthy, they get the man or the woman of their dream straight away. Their business is just perfect. No, I want the grit. I want to see that someone overcame severe trials and obstacles because then I can say to myself, yes, if they can do it, I can do it. So the failures that you have at the moment are the fuel that is going to draw your readers in. People love a story where you say, this is where I started and this is where I finished. So use that. Another problem is that people cultivate negative thoughts instead of positive ones. You may have been told that you're not good enough. You may have been told that you're stupid. You may believe those ridiculous things, but that's not true. The only failure is someone who quits. Just start again. This is not school. In school, you wrote a test, you passed or failed. When I wrote statistics, 
my lecturer gave me the statistics paper under the table because my mark was so horrendous. And you know what? I still passed statistics. It was a grind, but I still passed it because that didn't define me. You have the right to start all over again and you can say the right things. You can plant seeds in your mind to allow you to start. I'm loving what my eldest daughter is doing at the moment. She has swapped to a different educational program. And so she keeps on repeating the modules until the facilitators tell her she's ready to write the exams. She doesn't, like we did at school, fail, do well, fail, get an average. She keeps on redoing things until she feels she's confident enough to write. And I love that. That is the way you should be celebrating your author career. Start planting in your mind affirmations of what you can do. Now, this is not just hocus pocus. This is true. Say this to yourself. I am resourceful enough to learn the skills I need to reach my dreams. You're not in the place of your dreams because you may not yet have the skills and those skills can be learned. Let's shoot over to personal memories. I've got two personal memories I want to share with you. The first one is Ellerton School. So I know this is not pop idols, but I'm going to sing a very silly little song to you to just put it out there. Oh, Ellerton, happy are we? Under the signs of the anchor three, we work and play by the school by the sea. Oh, Ellerton, happy are we? What is that song? That song is my mother's primary school song. She is 68 years old. I am 48. I still remember that song. Why? Because she's from Cape Town. And every year while I was in primary school, we would spend Christmas with my grandmother. My mother would ask my father to drive past her school because she had such happy memories there. And she would sing the song every single time. Now, what does that song have to do with you? And for that matter, what does it have to do with me? Nothing. It is a meaningless memory. The only meaning that it has is that I occasionally sing it to my mom to remind her of when she was a girl. But in my day-to-day -day life, it doesn't serve me to have that song sitting in my brain. And there's a lot of things that we have got planted in our brain for whatever reason that doesn't serve us. Now, that's a happy memory. I'm going to go to something that's not a happy memory, and I call it cooking with gas. So I've always had a fear of burning. It comes probably from a time when I was little and I burnt my thumb on with my mother's cigarette lighter because I was lighting a piece of paper and I wanted to see how quickly it would burn. Kids do daft things like that. It may be for a more sinister reason, which some people who know me well would know about, but I have a fear of burning. Consequently, I also had a fear of gas because I maybe watched too many bad movies, with gas explosions. But for a while, I shared a house with someone and we had a gas stove. And not one of those modern self-igniting gas stoves. No, 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 no. One of the old-fashioned ones where if you were switching on the oven, you had to switch on the gas, peer your head inside, strike a match, and then the gas would ignite and you could cook. I never used that oven myself. I would get my housemate to switch it on and only then would I cook. But one particular night, we had drinks after work. And when I got home, I found that my housemate was also at an after work function. And I was ravenous. So there were pizza bases in the freezer. I took them out and I thought, I'm going to overcome this fear right now and switch on this oven. But I didn't take the time to learn the skills on how to work it. So I switched it on. Because I was scared, I only put the gas on just a tiny smidge. It wasn't enough gas to ignite the match. 
So I waited a little bit and then I thought, I have to turn the gas up. I've got to overcome this fear. So I turned the gas up. However, now a ball of gas had developed. And when I struck that next match, it exploded into my face. I know that I was probably doing this when it happened because afterwards I had actually burned the laugh lines on my face. And I burned my fingers because my fingers were the closest thing to the gas. My jersey was on fire. I threw that off. I contacted my medical aide. I got patched through to paramedics and they gave me some assistance. And I have no scarring. Thank you, Lord, for that. But at the end of the day, I had a pretty nasty experience. I had a lot of pain and I didn't get to enjoy my pizza. I rather spent the evening in hospital. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that my fear of the gas stopped me from taking the correct action. It managed my behavior and my fearful behavior ended up hurting me. So ask yourself this question from my case study. Did these memories that I have serve me? Was my fear helping me? No, it wasn't. I'm going to give you a financial example. The weekend before I did this recording, I got a message from Amazon to tell me that they were paying money into my Payoneer account. Now, Payoneer is a facility that allows people from across the world, freelancers, creative people, to have international bank accounts because Amazon does not pay into a South African bank account. I needed to have the pay in the account. Amazon pays into that account. I then request the payment to go from the pay in the account into my local bank account. So that was fantastic. But it took me more than 10 years to start my author career. And I thought to myself, how much could I have earned if I had started my journey early on? How many more followers, how many more readers, how much more royalties could I have? At a time now when a lot of people are struggling to produce income during COVID-19, did my fear help me or harm me? No, my fear harmed me because I could have provided more for my family in this time if I had taken action earlier on. So I have to ask you, what are you giving up by holding on to your damaging belief system? Now let's look at reframing that fear. What is fear when you're starting out as an author career. We have fear of failure. Failure is essentially fear of shame. So remember, this is not school. There's not going to be someone who's going to come and humiliate you in front of the class and tell you that you're a naughty boy or a naughty girl because you didn't do your homework. You are the one that is the author of your future. But we can use fear to produce better quality results in our lives. And you can use fear to produce a better quality writing career. One of the people that I follow is Jerry Jenkins. He is an international best-selling author. And he has written countless books. He has had his books turned into movies as well. And he also does biographies. He is a ghostwriter for someone that might be a career. A ghostwriter is someone that writes a book on behalf of someone else. So I would write the book for Sally. Sally's name would be on the book, but I'm the person who actually wrote it. And you can earn a living like that by doing ghostwriting for other people and never having to step into the limelight. That's for some people that are really shy but want to be able to earn a living off writing. So he said to us that if you have that fear, embrace it. Say, okay, I have a fear of making a fool out of myself. So what can I do about that? 
What skills can I learn to improve my writing skills so that I can produce the best quality book for my readers? So here are a few tips that I've learned along the way. Number one, find a free or paid professional editing software. Some people use Grammarly, it's quite extensively advertised and it's a pretty good program. But as an author, I chose to use ProWritingAid. Why? Because when I take a bout of text and I put it into Grammarly, I get a certain number of errors that get highlighted. I take that same text and I put it into pro writing and there are far, far more errors that have come through. So that means that I can get to correct those before I share my writing with other people, thereby minimizing my fear of failure. Pro writing aid has got a paid version and a free version. And what's wonderful about the free version is you can still get the same quality of editing, it's just reserved for fewer words. So I put in 500 words at a time. I have to tell you that this course is written for people that don't have the money to invest heavily in an author career. It is a way for you to start with simple solutions. The next thing that you can do to improve your quality is to read a lot of books. But don't just read them for entertainment value. Ask yourself, what is good about this book? What is bad about the book? If I was to write it, what would I want to include in it? What would I want to take away from it? Do I resonate with the characters? Do I know what the environment looks like? What does it smell like? Is it cold? Is it warm? What are the colors like? Make down, take down some notes about what you experience in the book. And then find a courageous reading friend who will give you honest feedback. So let me tell you, I've been an entrepreneur for 19 years. People sometimes have all excited about what you do, but they don't always have the courage to be able to walk the journey along with you. And they don't always give you the feedback you need to grow. Some people say, oh, I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited. But they never read your book and they don't know what's happening in it and they don't help you market it. So you might want to spend all of your time hanging out with people that are just excited for you, but don't add value to your career. And that means that you're going to be like one of those people on pop idols where your parents told you that you were fantastic, but you just bombed out and you were completely tone deaf. I would be that person if I went on to pop idols. But for writing, you want to have someone that can give you honest feedback. So in our family, that person is my husband. He has got a critical mindset, which is very helpful for him to be able to find errors. And I don't want errors when I am presenting to my readers. So my husband will look at the text and he will ask questions like, why did the person do that? Is it possible for this to happen? One of the earliest things that he did is in, in my first manuscript, I had a girl that was traveling with a whole bunch of things and she was relatively young. And then he said, is it physically possible for her to carry those things? And I thought, okay, it's not. I have to rewrite that section. So I put in a sled and she put all of the things on the sled and she dragged the sled. And so that made the story more believable. So this is a time that you've got to basically embrace the critics, but you've got to find someone that will be honest with you about doing that. The next thing you can do to improve your quality is to find an editor. Editors do charge you. So in the beginning, work on crafting your story and then find an editor later on and either find a repayment plan or find someone that will be able to give you an opportunity of doing a chapter by chapter. There are different ways of working with editors and we will cover that in another module. Now we're going to go on to our famous author criticisms. What we said earlier on is that fear of failure is essentially a fear of shame. You don't want to be embarrassed in front of other people. You don't want those criticisms. When you were younger, getting approval was incredibly important. It was a survival skill because you wanted your parents to be able to continue looking after you, caring for you. So we have that natural fear of criticism. But now that you are an adult, or even if you're a teen, because you do get children and teen authors, 
you've got to say, I'm going to take that criticism and put it in its rightful place. It might be a criticism of the work, but it's not a criticism of me. It's not a rejection of me. And this is something that everyone, all authors, have to be able to deal with. My question to you is, how many companies do you think would exist if we all had exactly the same tastes in clothing, cars, and books? There would be very few companies. There is a place for all types of authors. You have to realize that people's tastes change according to their education, their lifestyle, what's happening with them, their life cycle, and I'll cover a little bit more about that but later on. And even famous authors have got critics. So let's start with our first famous author, Roald Dahl. Now, I've read a couple of his books because my children had to read it. He is a really famous author, a British novelist, short story writer, poet, screenwriter, wartime pilot. And I also found out when I was doing the research for this course that he was a World War II spy. That's pretty intriguing stuff. So let's see what the praise is. It says here, Doll is, was a genius at inventing words and children could work out what they meant just by the sound. He has sold over 250 million copies worldwide. And what did he write? He wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He was quite a remarkable person. Um, he got a lot of criticisms for some of his political views. But there were a couple of extra things that Roald Dahl did. He had a child that had a brain issue. And together, he, a neurologist and a toy maker who manufactured small hydraulics for toys, came up with a kind of valve that helps to drain fluid from the brain that is still used in surgeries today. Plus, he had a wife who developed a series of strokes while she was pregnant with their child, and she lost the ability to walk and talk, and Roald Dahl helped to teach her to manage those skills again. But he did have critics. Here is what one of the critics says. Wonka is a vegetarian and only eats healthy food, but he seduces children with sweets. It's highly immoral, she says. And I did put a reference for you if you want to look up the article and find some of the other criticisms that Roald Dahl has made or has received. The next author is Daniel Steele. Now, I read Daniel Steele when I was a teenager. We had an exchange student that came and stayed with us, and she lent me the copy, the copy of her book, Perfect Stranger. And I cried in that book. There is a moment where the husband of the character makes an enormous sacrifice and it is out of love and devotion for this woman. And it is a sacrifice that I think that very few men would ever be able to make. So when I tell people about this sacrifice, I still get kind of tearful about it, even though this is completely a fictional story and I shouldn't feel so soppy about it, but it was written in such a beautiful, moving way. Now, this is what they say about her. Romance author Daniel Steele has published more than 170 copies of her four-decade career, selling 800 million copies worldwide. That is staggering. It's a staggering amount of people that follow her. And still there are some people that consider her writing to be a hobby. Her early career was as a public relations specialist. And the praise that she has received, here's what one reader said. From the first page, I was captivated by the story as normal when reading a D. Steele novel. I became enthralled with this book and could not put it down. And that was literally copied and pasted from the review that the person left. Did she get criticisms? Oh my word, yes. So this critic says, 
try writing a different perspective besides the woman with problems or even deeper characters. I just, I'm sorry, your books are so boring. Okay, and there's the reference in case you thought I was making that up. And I have to say that there are times when I need to read a Daniel Steele book. And my life is very pressurized. I've had a lot of challenges. And sometimes I just need a little bit of a mental holiday. And I will read her books because I know that I'm going to feel good at the end. And that fulfills my need at the time. Here we go on to Wilbur Smith, which is an author that I read extensively when I was younger. One of the things that I loved about Wilbur Smith is, was his Courtney series. I can't even remember what the actual name of the books were, but what resonated with me was this young woman who got washed ashore in the Kalahari Desert after she had had a um, shipwreck and she was pregnant at the time and the indigenous people found her and taught her how to survive, how to find water, how to live off roots, the different kinds of activities that she needed to survive. And at the time when I was reading it, I was a teenager, I had a couple of issues that I needed to overcome and it really resonated with me. These these characters that had overcome all obstacles it helped me to find my courage so i'm quite indebted to this particular author so wilbur addison smith is a british novelist specializing in historical fiction he is an accountant by training so that is there to tell someone that doesn't matter what your profession is you too can become an author in 2014, they stated that he had sold 120 million copies. And here is some of the praise that Wilbur Smith got. Great reading with a never ending adventure and excitement that kept me awake way past bedtime for a good few nights. But did he get criticisms? Oh boy, yes, he did get criticisms. This person says, by page 30, I had thrown it on the floor in revulsion, and that's a serious word, and I honestly wish I hadn't picked it up and discovered what happened on page 100, as I fear it may haunt me forever. Okay, so I have to tell you that I read a book called Hail the Conquering Hero when I was a teenager, and there is a horrible scene in there that every now and then does actually haunt me. So I get what this critic is saying. And I have to say that there has come a time in my life where I have gone off this particular author, not because his work is not good, his work is fantastic. I would highly recommend it to certain kinds of readers, but when I became a mother, I kind of lost my appetite for some of the stories that he wrote. Um, but still an incredibly, incredibly, famous and successful author. Now, this particular criticism came from this website, Women's Views on News, and I can tell you that some of the criticisms against Wilbur Smith is his treatment of women, of uh, their place in society, and uh, so that comes from from a woman that obviously took exception to one of the characters or one of the scenes that Wilbur Smith had written. Okay, so now we're gonna jump into your homework. But before we do that, I just wanna recap on a couple of things. Have you decided what your dream is? Let's just stop the share so that you're not gonna get distracted. Okay, so have you decided what your dream is? If you haven't, jot it down for a second. Or make a note that that is what you're going to do. Then, have you thought about what it is in your past that is making you fearful of starting? What failure, what things are you saying to yourself? What belief system do you have? Have you ascertained that all authors have got criticism. You are not going to be unique. Embrace the criticism, embrace the fear to be able to write a better quality novel.
If you've got those points, you are well on your way. And now we want to jump into the homework again. So let's get back there. Right. The first thing I want you to do is to go onto Amazon.com. And I want you to open up a normal buyer's profile, not an author profile, just a normal buyer's profile. Amazon is going to ask you for your credit card details or your debit card details. Do not be afraid of doing this. It's a very reliable website, international selling company. They are asking you this so that in the future, if you want to purchase something, that your credit card details are already stored there that you can very easily and quickly make purchases. But what I'm going to ask you to do, to do today is not going to cost you anything. Now you go into the book section and find between two to four books from completely different authors, authors you might never want to read, you might never imagine you would read. Amazon allows you to view a sample of these books online. You simply have to request, send me a free sample. There will be a button that you will click on. It is then going to send the sample to either a device that you already have. So if you own a Kindle, that's great. If you don't own a Kindle, here are your options. Your cell phone allows you to download a free Kindle app if you're on a Samsung or something like it, I'm not quite sure what happens with Apple. But if you have a computer and you're accessing the books that way, Kindle allows you to have a free viewer of your books and you can read your books on the internet online. So go for that and choose your samples. Now, read each sample and make notes about what you like or dislike about that book. Remember the five senses. Can you visualize what's going on? Can you hear some of the sounds that are in the background, like crickets or the sizzling of the fire? Can you smell what's going on? Can you have some kind of emotional experience to it? Can you actually feel the coarseness of the sand between your toes? Are you having a sensory experience with what the author is busy saying? Can you imagine it? After you've written your notes, you're going to get a feel for what's going to help you in terms of your writing. Now, homework assignment number two. First, start by opening up a free pro writing aid profile. You can do a trial where they will allow you to download the software onto your computer and it's going to be able to run through a lot of things that you're working on. You can also use the, use the free online version. You would state whether you are writing fiction or if you're writing an article and it's going to give you a wonderful way of looking through your work and giving you instructions and guiding you. Most of the initial things that I learned about writing came from this source. My editor did fantastic developmental work, which I cannot get from the editing software, but it helped me to produce a better quality manuscript so that by the time my author got to it, she wasn't working through masses of spelling mistakes and things like that, which would have been time consuming. And that meant that she could start doing the correct work that I needed to her to do much faster than if I had just vomited all my ideas out onto the page and passed her something that hadn't been edited whatsoever. Okay, now I want you to write between 200 to 500 words on anything that you felt in reaction to on social media, the news, or WhatsApp in the last few days. So here are some examples. Recently in South Africa, the Minister of Tourism released what changes are going to happen in COVID-19 level three lockdown. And one of the things that they said was going to happen is that the hunting industry was going to be reopened. Now, apparently at the time of this recording, the hunting industry in South Africa is a two billion rand industry. I'm not sure how much that is in dollars. You can Google that, the Rand Dollar Exchange, and see what that means in your local currency. 
Now, everyone has got an, their own personal feelings about hunting. And I would like you to write an article about this. So here are some ideas. If you are a vegetarian for humanitarian purposes, you are going to feel that hunting is an abomination and shows that we are a cruel and unjust society. And you will probably write quite an emotional piece. If you're not a vegetarian and you do eat meat, but you don't agree with the way that animals are seen to abattoirs and the fear that they have, you might have the feeling that you should only ever eat meat that you have hunted yourself. So that could be an article for that. If you don't care either way, but it, you are working on improving the economy in the country, you might want to write an economic piece. If you are a hairdresser, and you cannot operate, you might say, how is that remotely fair that we are allowed to go and kill animals, but I cannot do someone's hair and provide them with dignity and, and get livelihood. So you might have a completely different feel. Whatever you feel, write some words about that. Okay, then the next thing is binging on TV during lockdown healthy. So we found our, ourselves in a place that we had to be in lockdown at an Airbnb. We put all of our things into storage. We were waiting a month to move into the place that was going to become available, but then all of a sudden we had lockdown. So we now have DSTV. I never had DSTV beforehand. I find that some of the programs are a little bit repetitive. So I prefer to use other methods of entertainment, but we now have it. So I see that in the advertisements on DSTV, they keep on reinforcing binge watching. People are doing binge watching of Netflix, of Showmax, of different TV programs, and you might have a certain feeling about binge watching. For some people, you might say, if it wasn't for TV, I might have murdered my children already. I don't think I can handle the stress. This is my only stress relief. You might have learned a few new skills by binge watching, or you might say it's a complete waste of time and energy, and it just reinforces addictive, lazy behavior. I don't know what your take is. This is what I did during lockdown. I did a course on Amazon advertising. I did a course on doing blurbs. I started developing this course series and I wrote some extra words on, on my book series. So those were the things that I chose to do during lockdown, but I did watch more TV than what I was accustomed to. And I chose to watch things that would help me in some of my books that would stir the emotion, that would have a look at investigation. I love the travel programs because there were a lot of archeology span things in there that really served me in terms of my books. And then another thing is, what did you learn from homeschooling your children if you do have children? Or what did you learn from other people sharing your experiences of homeschooling? Now, after you finish writing these articles, and I've kept it under 500 words, because like we said, on the free version of Pro Writing Aid, you can edit 500 words very easily. That doesn't mean you stop there, you take your 500 words off, paste it into a Word document, and then upload your next 500 words. I have edited an entire novel of 90,000 words using the free version. So you can do that too. So there is your homework. So let's do a quick recap. Number one, what is the dream that you have? Financial freedom, leaving a legacy, telling a great story. What is your personal dream? Then what are the things that are holding you back? Is there a memory that you have of the past that is holding you back from starting? We learn to embrace fear and say, how can it be a fuel to help us produce a better quality novel? Criticism for authors is a way of life. 
It is not a rejection of you, although some people might want to make it like that. The truth is that we can't escape criticism. So take the criticism that serves you so that you can produce a better quality book and discard the ones that are actually don't have space in your life. Then do your homework, start getting a feel for other authors and start learning what you need to improve in your work. I thank you very much for taking the time to participate in this training course. I hope that it was beneficial to you. Please contact me if there are other things that you would like to see. And at the end of June, you will be able to have access to our paid version of the courses. For now, the modules are for free. So really take advantage while you can. Thank you and happy writing.